Hello everyone and welcome back to our series about teaching maths in the FET phase. That's grades 10, 11 and 12. First, let's start by taking a look at our video on the topic of ratio and proportion. In the diverse world that we live in, ratios are seen and used all around us. The battle of the sexes can be simplified to a ratio, men compared to women. Ratio is therefore just the comparison between two or more things. It is important to remember that the things we are comparing must be the same kind. For example, the number of men to the number of women. Proportion, on the other hand, is when two ratios are put equal to each other. In other words, it is an equation that can be solved and can involve different units. In the following classroom scenario, at Pafokhang Secondary School, Mr. Taska Matlejwane will endeavor to guide the learners in order to formulate and prove the theorem themselves. The outcomes for the learners are to explore the difference between ratio and proportion, show through investigation and measurement that the line parallel to one side of a triangle cuts the other two sides in proportion, formulating the theorem and proving the theorem. How many of you can roll their tongue? The teacher will informally introduce the lesson by asking the learners to roll their tongues. Five, or six, seven. After which he will record the rollers and non-rollers in order to demonstrate ratio. I've got 13 out of 31 learners who can roll their tongues. And that gives us a, a, what you call a ratio. Or in this class, we have got 31 learners. 13 of them can roll their tongue, 18 can roll. Therefore, the ratio of rollers to non-rollers is 13 to 18. In this activity, each learner is given a piece of string of 30 centimeters. I want you to divide each of those strings in a ratio of 3 is to 7. Proportional reasoning is a difficult skill that develops slowly over several years. Learners should be given a variety of experiences with concrete materials to develop a conceptual understanding. They need to see many problem situations that can be modeled and then solved through proportional reasoning. Learners should be encouraged to solve problems in a variety of ways. Some learners will automatically do things in a practical way by means of measurement. Others will intuitively solve a problem. In this case, the learner has mistakenly seen the ratio of 3 to 7 as 3 parts of 7. This is 7 units. Then if I take half of this, it will be 3 and a half. Now we're looking um, for a ratio of 3 to 7. Therefore, we're going to make this a little bit longer, which will be 3 and 4, this side, right? Which will add up to 7 units. Some learners will try and find an algebraic way in which to solve the problem. Our string is 30 centimeters, then we divided it by 10, then it gave us 3. We took the 3, then we multiplied it by the other 3, it gave us 9. Then we took this 7 from the ratio and multiplied it by 3, then it gave us 21. The important points here are, add the ratio units together to get an understanding of how the line will be divided. That is 3 plus 7 equals 10. Divide the actual length by the total units. That is 30 centimeters divided by 10 units equals 3. And times that by the amount of units. That is 3 times 3 equals 9. And 3 times 7 equals 21. I actually realized the learners uh, couldn't handle the question of division of a line segment because the string to them represented a line segment and they didn't know how to divide it. But with little uh, intervention, they finally managed. And uh, I've realized that maybe I could have, uh, within my lesson, embedded something like the sharing of things like sweets. In another situation, the teacher uses sweets to explain ratio and proportion. If I have 10 sweets, I say you'll take three, she'll take seven. How many seats have I dished out? Ten. Now I, I increase. I want to give you 20. It means you are going to have how many? Six actually, I Good. Now if I have to issue out 30 seats. It's nine. She'll have 21. She'll have 21. And then all in all, the seats will be 30. 
the teacher will emphasize that the different ratios are proportional to each other and are reached by cross-multiplication. For example, 3 divided by 10 equals x divided by 20. This means that 10x is equal to 60 and x is equal to 6. In this activity, learners are given worksheets to complete. They have to measure the ratios of the sides of the triangles that are divided by parallel and non-parallel lines. Learners measure the length of the line segments as written on the worksheets and fill it in as a ratio. They will measure the angles and use equal corresponding angles to determine if the lines are parallel. The ratio I got for AD and DP is 1 is to 2. And then the third column is asked if DE is parallel to BC. I said yes because I measured the angles of D and angle B, which I got both 60 degrees, so the lines are parallel. For triangles 1, 2 and 3, the learners see that the lines are parallel and the sides have the same ratio. That is, AD divided by DB equals AE divided by EC. These two things are not proportional, ne? And then I see the lines are not parallel. So therefore... I'm In triangles 4, 5 and 6, the lines are not parallel and the ratio is not the same. The teacher and learners will now use this information to develop a theorem. Not parallel, ne? Not parallel. Now, what conclusion can you draw? Ratios are proportional when lines are parallel. Ratios are not proportional when lines are not parallel. This learner has come to the conclusion that ratios are proportional when lines are parallel and ratios are not proportional when lines are not parallel. The teacher explains. Out of the activity, this is what you have discovered. Okay? And we say it's a, it's, it's, it's a theorem or let me say maybe it's our thesis. Because if ever this is true and it can be proved true, then we'll say it's a theorem. The area of a triangle? Base times height. When proving a theorem, we make use of pre-existing knowledge like definitions, axioms, and previously proven theorems. Uh, learners need to be constantly uh, reminded of prior learning. And also, the, the, their, their previous learning, I think it had a problem. It was not self-discovered. That's why they tend to forget it. It is therefore important to revise all the building blocks that will be used to prove this theorem. The teacher begins by revising the area of two triangles with the same base and between the same parallel lines. If I want the height of this triangle ABC, it will be from A, any distance perpendicular to base BC. Ne? When it is determined that the perpendicular height of the two triangles are the same because they are between the same parallel lines, the learners and teacher will move to an understanding of the area of the two triangles. You said this what? Half base. What is our base? Is BC, ne? And then height? Height is H. Area of triangle D. B, C. What's the area of triangle D, B, C? Half B, C times height. What conclusion can you draw about the areas of these two triangles? The areas are equal. And these two triangles are between these two parallel lines. Now, what conclusion can you come to? Triangles between parallel lines that have the same base and height have an equal area. The line that is parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides in proportion. Now we are going to push the mathematical theory. Can you prove theoretically what we have done? The learners will now endeavor to prove this theorem true for all cases. Doing theorems in a more exploratory manner has many advantages for the learners. It turns out to be their own discovery. And secondly, it gives them a chance to be, you know, to participate. When learners are active participants, they concentrate better and they put their energy where it's necessary. Because if they sit and become passive listeners, at the end of the lesson, they recall absolutely nothing. Actually, even if they recall, that knowledge is not valid. 
Knowledge has to be constructed through their processes of learning. This learning starts with the teacher drawing a triangle ABC with lines DE parallel to BC. The teacher explains that the procedure involves You are given what? Triangle A, B, C with, with D, E parallel to B, C. We want to prove that now A, D, A, D over D, B is the same or is in proportion with what? A, E divided by E, C. This is what we said is true when we were handling it. Physically. For the first construction, Mr. Matlejoane draws a line between DC and BE. Construction 2 requires learners to draw an altitude from the bases AD and AE to their opposite vertices and to call them H and K. Learners can now complete the question which asks what lines H and K are perpendicular to. The teacher expands their ideas. H perpendicular to A, B. Line K perpendicular to line A, C. Now, what are the altitudes of this triangle A, D, E, and triangle E, D, B? So an altitude is perpendicular to the base and H is at 90 degrees there. Therefore, H is the height. Now, is it the height of both triangles, the yellow and the red? In the same way, learners discover that the height of triangles ADE and EDC are the same and are represented by K. Now that learners have all the tools, they can prove the theorem. The question on the worksheet requires of them to divide the area of triangles ADE by DBE and area of triangles ADE by area of triangle ECD. The values are substituted and cancelled out. Finally, the answer here, you got AD over DB. This is what you got, ne? all of you. And then when you're working out this one, you finally got the answer AE equals to EC. Is that clear? Now the challenge is to prove now, that the top equation yes, is equal to the bottom important. equation. That is that AD divided by DB equals AE divided by EC. Triangle ADE is the same thing as triangle ADE, all right? Okay. Now, this triangle is the one which differs a little from this one. The teacher refers to these two triangles on the chart. What do you know about this red triangle versus the green triangle? They have the same area because they've got the same base and the same height. What base are they sharing? DE can be the base. That's the base. And this is a triangle shooting that way, the other one shooting that way between the two parallel lines. Therefore, they are equal in area. The teacher returns to the original the equation. These two things which are equal, they are divided by equal things. Ne? Now, what conclusion can you come to about this quotient and that quotient? Learners come to the conclusion that because the two equations are equal, AD over DB is equal to AE over EC. AE over what? EC. All right. Now, the conclusion which we have come to is precisely what we were asked to prove. And that completes a mathematical theorem. When you are going to introduce this lesson on ratio and proportion, uh, take various examples. Don't only stick to a string or sweets or stones. Uh, be more broader and that will drive more sense to them. Now that we've seen the video, time for us to welcome our guests. We've got Smangali Sotwala, who's an independent maths consultant. We've got Catherine Hunter, who's also an independent maths consultant, and Mayra Hockman from the Witt School of Mathematics. The first question to you, Mayra. Why are ratio and proportion important concepts for learners to grasp? 
ratio and proportional concepts of mathematics that permeate our daily lives. And students and people in general have quite a lot of difficulty extracting the mathematics from these daily instances. They may be in the supermarket, they may be in a restaurant, they may be involved with how to divide a space of a home. It's very important that students are able or are shown how to extract the mathematics from their daily lives. However, the ideas of ratio and proportion, even the words, are difficult for students. So a lot of groundwork needs to be laid before we embark on dealing with the mathematics.